give them a round of applause. <laughs> we thank the Lord for their service. We thank the Lord for them continuing to be disciplined and diligent unto the vision. May the Lord continue to shower them with grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's also welcome the pastors of the house, Pastor David and Pastor Amanda Foster. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your servants, the pastors, the shepherds of this house who are constantly putting themselves out and trying the best they can by your grace to serve your people and to serve the heads of this house as well. Continue to bless them and shower them with favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we'll just say, I'm just going to say a prayer and we're going to go straight into the message. So, Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your presence here with us. Father, without you, there would be no need to come here. But it's because of you that we come here, that we may partake, that we may enjoy your presence, that we may worship you, that we may pray and make our petitions known, that we may hear your word, your word that revives, your word that restores, your word that uplifts, your word that promotes, your word that causes breakthrough in the lives of your people. Father, I honor you today and I ask you by your grace to make known your word, your message today. And I pray, O oh Lord, that as we hear your word, O oh Lord, that we will lay hold, we will lambano, we will lay hold of it, and we will run with it in the mighty name of Jesus. We will be like the men of Issachar that knew the signs, the times and the seasons, that we will know that this is the sign, the time and the season of the beauty of the Lord. And Lord, we believe we receive and we lay hold and we walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you. Today we're looking at the potency of the, the beauty of the Lord. You know one thing I found in Chogi Every month, the Holy Spirit gives a word. The question is, are you believing that word? Because if you're not believing the word, how are you receiving the word? The word comes, but unless you believe it and receive it, you won't enjoy the potency, the power, and the benefits of that word. Last month, grace, grace was flowing. And even now, grace is still flowing. Last month, for those who were believing and receiving, grace was carrying them. Grace was lifting them. Grace was covering them. Grace was protecting them. Grace was their rear guard. Grace was their door opener. Grace was fighting for them. This month, we're looking at the beauty of the Lord. What does that mean? What does the beauty of the Lord mean? Beauty is not just as the world sees it. Cosmetically, aesthetically, this man or this woman is beautiful. No. When we talk about the beauty of the Lord, yes, it is beautiful. It is a wonder. But it's more than that. It is glorious. It is light. It illuminates. When the beauty of the Lord is shining on an individual, they begin to shine. They begin to illuminate. The beauty of the Lord is the countenance of the Lord. 
when Moses went in to see the Lord. You see this in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29 to 35. When he went into the presence of the Lord, when he beheld the beauty of the Lord, the beauty of his presence, something happened to him. It's inescapable. When you contact the beauty of the Lord, it is inescapable. There must be something that takes place. It says it here. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets, table, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him, because he beheld the beauty of the Lord. Therefore, his face shone. And it wasn't just him seeing it. It's not like, oh, he just looked in the mirror and he saw it. No, he says clearly that the congregation saw his face. The congregation was sure afraid when they saw his face beaming and shining by the glory of the Lord. In fact, his face shone so much that he had to place a veil upon his face. So I want you to know one thing. I know everything about the Lord. I didn't say I know everything about the Lord and I didn't stop there. No, I have not even begun to know everything about the Lord. What I'm saying is, I know that everything about the Lord is unstoppable. So what I'm saying to you is this. When the beauty of the Lord is operating, and it is operating for every single one of us, because we are Zion, we are the dwelling place of the Lord. We are the dwelling place of the Lord. So the beauty of the Lord is shining forth for you. And I tell you that when the beauty of the Lord is shining, every situation that looks ugly, that looks deformed, that looks marred, that looks void, that looks without form, all those things will turn around to look beautiful for your behalf. He says, in the beginning, right? In the beginning, if you go to Genesis, he says, the earth was void and without form. It was void, it was empty and without form. It was void, it was empty and without form. But the Lord said, he says, the spirit of the Lord hovered upon the waters. The Lord of beauty hovered upon the waters. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. And when you look at throughout creation, it says, when he finished, it says, and it was good. And it was good. But it started off from what? Void and without form. So the question is, what in your life right now looks ugly? What in your life right now looks deformed? Is it your finances? Is it your health? Is it lack of progression? Is it still working of the Lord that he needs to do in you? What looks void? And without form, take courage today, because so was the earth before the Lord of beauty hovered and spoke and brought out of what was void, he brought beauty. I tell you today, no matter what your life looks like, know this, the Lord of beauty resides in you. He dwells in you. Therefore, walking with the Lord, and I say walking with the Lord, walking with the Lord, that beauty will automatically shine forth for you. I don't want to go into many testimonies, but the territory the Lord gave me Many people didn't think it's beautiful. They said, what can come out of that place? I didn't have that. I was still like, Lord, 
you want me to be like Peter? It's like, I told you the long story, but he was like, cast your net out again. So I wasn't even thinking of the land. But when I came into the land, I heard people like, Durham, it's a barren land. No one has succeeded there. But you know what? Because of the Lord of beauty, because of the beauty shining upon me, shining upon my land, the land is producing fruit of itself. And every door I knock is opening because the beauty, beauty. They don't know they're seeing it. People will not understand it. All they see is that you are just shining. You are just shining. I've seen people, I've seen a sister, I don't want to mention her name, but she's here. She knows what, she'll know what I'm saying. When she was going through lots and lots of troubles in her life, if, this, if she was an ordinary person, just a mere mortal, it would have shown all over her face. The ugliness of her situation would have shown all over her face, all over her body. But you know what? The beauty of the Lord was causing her to shine even in an ugly situation. And I can guarantee you this, the Lord has not finished. What he has started, he will complete. He has not finished beautifying your life. And when it's finished, just as all works of the Lord shine forth, so you also will shine forth in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a time and a season we spoke when beauty must manifest. God ordains the season of beauty. And by faith, we do what? What do we do by faith? Lay hold. Lambano in Greek. Lay hold and don't let go. If we're going to enjoy this beauty, we must know that there is a time for beauty to manifest. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, I'm going to take the Amplified. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. I'm going to just take the first part. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time. Let me tell you something. I said about the world. The world, when they want to make a woman pretty, they put on makeup, right? Or they change her apparel, her garments. Or for a man, they change his garments. And they say, oh, that looks beautiful. Or this car looks like it's designed well. It looks beautiful. Listen, when the beauty of God is shining through you, they will not understand what you are using. Okay, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Well, it's not funny. Maybe it's an interesting story. My mom, she's 87 years old. She still looks pretty decent for her age. Thank God. Anyway, she used to go to, like, salon, and they'll be like, what cream are you using? What cream are you using? And she says, I'm not using cream. It's just God. They're like, no, 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 but there must be a cream that you are using. How much is that cream that you are using that I may purchase it? And she's like, I'm not using any cream. It's just God. What I'm saying to you is this. The beauty of the Lord is what? It's unstoppable, but it's also something that cannot be found. It can't be found in the world. Human beings have a limit to their beauty. They have a limit to how far they can go. They have a limit to how far they can beautify something. But when God does something, when God beautifies something, when God beautifies your finances, everybody will see. When God beautifies your health, everybody will know about it. Do you not know that the Bible says that the Lord, when he is doing these things, he does it so that everybody will see. Everybody will see your shining in the land of the living. The word says that he prepares a table before in the presence of your enemies. Why? So that they may see it. 
and they may see the end of it, but they will not partake, they will not partake of it. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32a says, and this is where I'm coming back to it. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Chogi, do you know what to do? And the children of Issachar, I just asked you a question, everyone was blank. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Chogi, do you have understanding of the times? Do you have an understanding of the time of this month right now? Yes. So what ought you to do? What should you do? Pray. Okay. What else? Believe. Receive. Lay hold. Operate in it. You know, after last month, the Holy Spirit gave me a declaration, and I continue to declare that throughout my month. Just so you know that I'm not actually just joking. My declaration every day is, Heavenly Father, thank you for the exceeding riches of your grace. I believe in this grace by faith, by grace. I receive your grace. I operate in it by your grace. And now I release your grace into every area of my life and being so that your desire may, may be fulfilled in my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for showing me with your grace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So now, this month is beauty. What ought you to be doing? Releasing the beauty of the Lord into every area of your life. Into every area of your life and being. Whatever looks deformed, release the beauty of the Lord. Lord, my finances, they look marred, they look deformed, they look ugly. Because lack is ugly. Lack is not beauty. There's no lack in the presence of God. There's no lack in his dwelling place. There is no illness in his dwelling place. So these things are ugly. They are not beautiful. You can't tell me that illness is beautiful. It's not. You can't tell me that lack of finances is beautiful. You can't tell me that struggle and toil is beautiful. That is not toil. Let me tell you something. Working hard is good. Toiling was not originally how the Lord said it to be. That came after curse. That came after curse. And curse is not beautiful. When you are working with the Lord, and the Lord is making things beautiful, making your land beautiful, I'm telling you, you'll be working, but God is working for you. The land is producing, it's producing, it's producing. That's why Isaac planted, and within a year, a hundred times fold. Is that normal? That's not normal. But because of the beauty of the Lord, operating through his land, through his possessions, a hundred times fold. So you may have your own declarations today, your own declarations this month. Lord, every area that looks ugly, every area that looks without form, every area that looks void, every area that looks deformed, any area that looks marred in my life, in the mighty name of Jesus, I release the beauty, I release your beauty, the beauty of the Lord into that area, Lord. This month I will see a divine turnaround. This month I will see divine restoration. From ugliness, I will see beauty. From mud, I will see beauty. From deformity, I will see beauty. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will start declaring it. And you will also see it. Now there are forces that impact seasons. If you, get, if you look, for instance, Israel. They were in Egypt. They were supposed to be there for 400 years. Four generations. But they were there for 430 years. Now we knew that they were meant to be slaves. There was an oppressive hand. And we could go further into Moses. Moses. Anyway, we'll leave that for a moment. But the point is, they were there for longer than they needed to be. Because there were spiritual forces that said, we're not letting. You think it was Pharaoh? 
Pharaoh is not that strong. He's not Pharaoh. It's the forces that were behind Pharaoh. That's the point. It's always the spiritual that permeates in the physical. It's the spiritual that imposes itself on the physical realm. So there were forces behind that. Why do you think, why, if there were not forces behind them, why is it that when Moses laid down his rod, why were they not like, oh my gosh, we're so scared. There's that, oh boy. Look at this small boy. Came with rod. Uh-uh. You don't know who we serve. They also cast down their rod. And it turned into a snake. But his snake swallowed their snakes. But they had a confidence. Why? If, do you think it was Pharaoh? They had confidence. If it was Pharaoh, they, would have, they themselves would have said, okay, you know what, your God has come. Oh, let his people go. No. They had confidence in those forces, those demons that they were serving. And those demons were the ones saying, mm -mm 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 -mm. we are not letting them go. But you know what it says? Nigerians say, when power jam power, the lesser power will succumb. So that's the thing. The real power turned up. The real power of the beautiful Lord turned up. And what happened? Those demons, they had to check out. They will check out of your life too. No, 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 no. You, you might think I'm joking. They will check out. You will look for them north, south, east, and west. You will not find them. Because when, when the real power comes, they always check out. They checked out with Elijah. They checked out. Call on your people. Call on your demons. What happened? Nothing. They cut themselves. They did everything. Did they, did they turn up? No. They know who is God. He says, the Bible says that they know that there is one God and they shudder with fear. They know. Don't worry. Your Lord is here. He's in you. They're already checking out. You heard what I said? They're checking out. We went to Nigeria. I'm going to say this quickly. We went to Nigeria by the power of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord. The Lord carried us on eagle's wings. We're already praying. We said... By the grace of the Lord, what is going to happen to these non-entities? I call them non-entities. I don't care. They're non-entities. If they have so much power, why couldn't they stop us? Why couldn't they stop? They knew what we were coming to do. They couldn't stop us. We still came there and the Lord still did what he wanted to do. They still couldn't stop us. They're non-entities. Do you hear what I said? They are non-entities. There are forces that still use and consume beauty. There are forces and people that use up and consume beauty. These forces destroy beauty when it's in season. Sin consumes beauty. Sin consumes beauty. It doesn't matter how beautiful a woman looks or how handsome a man looks see a man that is in sin or a woman that is in sin and you will see pressure on their body this is one thing that you know I wish we had like medical practitioners here but when you see someone who is under the burden of sin you will see weakness in their body their body either becomes frail their bones become frail muscles become frail, skin looks haggard, skin looks tired. It's like, okay, let me give you an example. These female uh, porn actresses, I'm just giving an example, or male porn actresses, you would think with all the money that they are consuming and their, their so-called enjoyable life, why don't they look so healthy? They're seeing the doctors all the time. Why don't they look so healthy? And it's not that they all have AIDS. Why don't they look so healthy? Why do they look worn out? They look worn out because sin will do that to you. Sin will cause your beauty to fade. Psalm 39, 11 says, when, when thou with rebukes dost correct man for sin, for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away, to consume away, to fade away like a moth, like a moth. Beauty fades prematurely. The person's countenance changes. Their light dims. You've heard the word where it says, the eye is a window to the soul. And it says, 
but and so there's light so is a lamp right but if there be darkness how deep would that darkness be so imagine it's from the soul that you see that's why you see some people not every believer but you see some people sometimes they're just shining from inside out sin darkens when someone is under the operation of sin there is darkness that's why it says in the scriptures that the evil one can pose as an angel of the light and his ministers as and his demons as ministers but do you know that for anyone who has even a slight spiritual eye they will see the darkness in satan it doesn't matter how much he shines on the outside it's men that don't see it men will celebrate antichrist they will be, oh, messiah oh he looks so nice but all believers will be looking at him and they'll be seeing death inside him they'll be seeing darkness the man of sin the man of perdition so it dims light for him he has no light b death grave forces and agents of death can consume beauty such as sickness people can also be taken before their time in the midst of beauty such as when young children die prematurely psalm 49 14 like sheep they are laid in the grave death shall feed on them death shall feed on them and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume where in the grave from their dwelling the beauty that they shone on the earth go to the grave no one sees it it's gone it's diminished let's flee to the way judgment of sin the Lord can cast down beauty as a judgment of sin I'm gonna read through this one quickly actually I'm not even gonna read for it but I'm gonna let you know Ezekiel 28 12 19 12 to 19 this is where the Lord was talking about the fallen cherub talking about the evil one whatever you want to call him Satan he took up this thing this parable and said thus saith the Lord God thou sittest up the sun full of wisdom and perfect in beauty thou hast been in Eden the garden of God every precious stone was thy covering and he goes on and on he was beautiful but then what iniquity iniquity came he says thou has defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee it shall devour thee and I will bring thee to ashes I will mar your beauty the beauty that you held and were so proud of I will remove that because thou has sinned therefore you will no longer be beautiful this is me just saying now paraphrasing you will no longer be beautiful I have taken it away errors and mistakes can cause beauty to fade but one thing I want you to know is this God is able to make all things new God is able to make all things new Papa says it doesn't take time it takes God and that's the truth you may have walked a path before a path of deformity you may have made mistakes you may have done particular sins but now with all your heart and all your mind and soul and strength you are turning back to the Lord I want you to know that the Lord will beautify your life stay with the Lord the Lord will beautify your life there is no ugliness that's too ugly there is no deformity that is too mar that is too deformed that the beauty of the Lord cannot make that thing beautiful there is no finances that could look so ugly even if it was your mistake that caused it there is no finances that God cannot turn around by his beauty when the beauty of the Lord is operating for you you become a magnet for wealth a magnet a magnet for wealth you say after me the beauty of the Lord 
is operating. The beauty of the Lord is operating in my life. He's operating in this vessel. It's flowing through this vessel onto every area of my life. In my children, beauty. In my finances, beauty. In my opportunities, beauty. In my job, beauty. In my business, beauty. I see with my spiritual eyes. I see the beauty of the Lord. And now I see the beauty of the Lord manifesting into every area of my life. Everything that looked ugly, everything that looked marred, everything that looked void, everything that looked deformed is now turned around by the beauty of the Lord. Amen. He gives you beauty for ashes. I have to, I've got about four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I will speed this up. I'll speed it up. Um, he gives you beauty for ashes. Isaiah chapter 6, 1, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The Lord is glorified by you. The Lord is glorified by you. He is our diadem of beauty. He is our beauty. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 5 says, In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory. You can have a crown of anything. It doesn't have to be a crown of glory. A crown can be bronze. It could even be a crown of thorns like they placed on Jesus. But here is the Lord saying that he will be a crown of glory for you. A crown of illumination. A crown of shining. A crown of light. A crown of strength and power. And he says, and for a diadem of beauty. What's the difference between diadem and crown? Well, a crown can be anything. I could make this paper into a crown. But a diadem is a crown that is engraved with jewels. With jewels. That's why they, in the UK they call it the crown jewels. And they put it in a special place. And he's saying to you that he will be a royal diadem. Yeah? A royal diadem. You'll be a royal, sorry, in 62.3, but he will be a royal, he'll be a diadem of beauty. That you will shine out unto the residue of the people. You will shine out unto the nations. And we are reflecting that beauty. In Isaiah 62.3, it says, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. I want you to understand what that means. It means that in the hand of God, you are shining. And God opens his hand and he shows everyone. He shows your enemies. Look, this one is shining. He shows all around. Look, this one is shining. Because he's so proud of you. Why else did he say about Job when he was saying to the evil one? Why did he say, have you seen this one? That is what the Lord is saying about you. That's what he's saying to the nations. That's what he's saying to those that want to pull you down. He's saying, have you seen my child? Have you seen Nathan? Have you seen Angel? Have you seen Samantha? Look, they are shining in righteousness. So he says, you will be a royal diadem in the hand of God. A child to behold in the hand of God. One who is beautiful, illuminated, shining, and glorious in the hand of Yah. He shows you off. So, I won't go further. But I will say, there's something about Job. We are greater than Job. Because we are greater than all those born of the flesh. And you know this from the word of God. I said, he will lift up his hand and say, look at my child. This child is perfect, upright, fearing God, hating evil. But there's something about Job, which I know the Lord wants to also see in us. A steward, in, a steward evil means he hated and abstained and deliberately walked away from evil. That is what the Lord wants for us as well. He's saying Job, Job 31.1, it says, I made a covenant. Job says, I made a covenant 
with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a maid? So the beauty of the Lord is ever ready to operate for us. Let us all eschew evil in the mighty name of Jesus.